I think feedback is critical because as a student, a lot of times you don't have that developed eye yet. You're not able to think critically and really make sense and analyze what it is that you're creating. And having that, that feedback allows you to not have to reinvent the wheel. You're able to shortcut the path and the learning curve. Uh, and so that's why I think the feedback is really important. Hi, Christopher. Welcome back to week two of environment sketching. So looking at your homework here, I think one thing that you could do would be to draw some just basic shapes. Like I like this formula that you're using to come up with the right mixture based on this reference image. But what you could do would also be to look at some of the shapes that you see in here as well so that you can use that as a reference point for adding your own ideas to it. So for example, if we look at this, I think curves is pretty obvious. So there is this strong S curve. Uh, you know, I can go with a, a bigger brush for right now to start with. And also there's this kind of triangular shape that seems to repeat a little bit. And then there's of course the curved or half circle shape that we see in some of those structures. And what this does is it's going to give you a, a stronger foundation when you start drawing in your shapes because I feel like some of these shapes don't necessarily fit in this world at least with like the, the type of gesture and feeling. Um, also it would help if you had a very specific type of object that you're doing the silhouettes for. Um, I, I can see the translation from the silhouette studies to the, the sketches. You're getting some of those shapes in there which is cool. I think uh, your sketches are fine and the compositions are fine. It has more to do with making sure that this silhouette study phase ties in with the transportation hub theme that, that we're working towards. Um, give us something more tangible than just some abstract shapes. Like right now you're using those shapes for buildings, so that's fine. But, but how can you push the design a little bit? I don't know if you have a specific genre or time period. That might help as well. This feels a little generic still, even though there's kind of an interesting shape here. But a lot of buildings kind of look like this. So if you could be a little bit more specific as well as have a very um, you know obvious or very clear choice on, on what it is that we're designing it, whether it's actually the building that, that houses the, uh, the ticket offices or is it the, the, uh, the hangar where maybe the trains or the planes are. So uh, write that down as well just to remind yourself. And this one I think it has a much stronger design language because of the, uh, the clear shapes and the obvious uh, you know, Asian theme to it. Um, I like the studies that you're doing down here. But again, how do these silhouette studies relate to really whatever it is specifically that you're drawing? Because what you're doing is you're drawing some more interesting buildings based off of this, this particular theme. But what happens if we need to make it into, say, a taco cart or a coffee cart? You know, could you do the same thing using this basic idea without actually making it look like a temple or something like that, right? Um, so this part is good and this part is good. Your sketching is fine. Let's think about, again, just being more specific with what it is that we're designing when you're doing these silhouette studies so that it's not just kind of an abstract or random uh, shape. Um, like I said, sketches are great. They communicate the, the language really well. Um, some of these feel more like a transportation hub than others. Some feel more like just like buildings, but overall I think you're really close. You just need to hone in a little bit more on the specifics. Um, yeah, these are these are cool. I would say maybe even uh, mix up the shape combinations and and go crazy. You know, don't don't try to stay within this safe zone as far as the sketches. Maybe you can kind of mix and match some of these shapes. And and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at least you're you're combining things in in interesting ways. So. I don't know what this is, but it's much more unique and different than I think a lot of these shapes because these are very close and very similar to the original reference. This is taking bits and pieces of that reference and coming up with something that's new that maybe you wouldn't necessarily think comes from here, right? If we look at this image, we can obviously see in your sketches the Japanese temple influence, but what if we just took a few of those parts 
and then came up with something totally unique that maybe you wouldn't necessarily tie back to that temple. Um, this is going to force you to think outside the box a little bit, and it's going to help expand your, your vocabulary as well. Um, your reference images are great. I would maybe even say for the inspirational, go outside of architecture and landscapes, look at plants and animals and fruits and vegetables and, and you know, weird things that maybe are kind of cool looking, you know, fish um, that give you a touchstone that you can use, but isn't necessarily tied in with transportation or buildings and, and things like that. Uh, and then as far as your sketches go, overall, I'd say, you know, you're on the right track. It's it's more about what kind of stuff can we put in there, you know, especially if you're doing a train station. Think about maybe designing a train off of one of these reference images. How would you design a train off of, say, this, this Asian temple here, right? What kind of shapes would you use? How would it still feel like a train while still contributing or... Um, well, still having some of the, the essence of this temple. So good luck this week. If you have any other questions, just let me know.